So, Philip, you're an etiquette expert. Correct. I represent an organisation called the British School of Etiquette. Well, but yet you're South African. Born and brought up in South <laughs> Africa to British parents, yes. Well, there we go. Now, some of the cast are talking about the correct way to pour wine, which feels like an inappropriate conversation for me to have right now, but something useful in the future. Definitely. What is your preference? I mean, in your part of the world, you've got such incredible wines. What do you, when you are enjoying a glass of wine? I'll have a wine, white, thank you. Love wine. White wine, again, needs to be served at a certain temperature. Mm -hmm. You want to be serving it between 8 and 10 degrees. In the Downton Abbey era, as in Mr. Well, Carson's, he would have chosen the wines to complement the food. Mm -hmm. And so he would go to the cellar, he'd have a cellar book, he'd make a note of exactly what he's going to be preparing that evening or that afternoon, that af that, sorry, in the afternoon mm -hmm. for that evening. And with red wines, if they were a certain vintage, he would actually get them standing up from a day before to let the sediment fall down. Mm. And I don't, have you actually seen the latest feature film? Yes, Did yes. Did you remember the, the Queen's butler was there with a candle? Yes. And he was just slowly winching up the red wine. Ah. So what he was doing is he was, with these darker bottles, and most red wines will have a darker coloured glass to protect the wine from light. Mm -hmm. There are three things that disturb wine. Vibration, as in movement, temperature fluctuations, and light. And so what he was doing, he was winching that wine, and w that, that candle was just behind what we call the shoulder of the wine. So once he could see the sediment was getting into this little area here, he would know then to just keep it and that, that would and be it, it. Yeah. and he would be decantering it. Oh. So these wines that are beautifully worth aging, will, 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 the, all the, the sediment will wait, sink to the bottom and then they would decanter it. And then when you pour it, there's a trick. Absolutely. So pouring in, in a lot of we these... We can do it with in water. A lot of the, that might be easier. No, we can do it with <laughs> it. They would, they would have a little, uh, what we call a, fr a wait, or what, there's a waiter's friend, which is the wine opener, but you would also have a little doily or, or a little petty serviette. Mm -hmm. And again, I think presentation skills is very important. Nice, tidy hands, not just showing you what that is. Mm -hmm. But again, approaching, you would obviously give it, and you may even feel for the temperature. Here we have a screw top, which mm -hmm. actually serves white wine very well. Mm -hmm. Less wines are being destroyed now mm -hmm. because of it. But imagine this being a cork open. Mm -hmm. It was already open. The wine, you'd always want to make sure that your guests and your host can see the label. So it's just holding the wine at the back like oh. that. Coming in over the right hand side, you would never. I would never lean across. So if someone was sitting here, lean across to pour you a glass yeah, of wine. Yeah, you always serve from from that side. You serve from the, the left, clear from the right, yeah. and you would serve your beverage from the right hand mm -hmm. side. So m imagine someone sitting here and they've agreed to having a glass of the wine. I would literally pour white wine just below half. I would twist. And the twist. The twist That's is very important, and if necessary, twist. you could bring your little f step back. Present again, walk to the next person. Mm. That's literally go. how you would Excellent. do the pouring of the wine. Well, very quickly, Philip, can you talk us through um, the different knives and forks? Certainly. Right. Have you ever seen a plate setting like this before? Yes, I'm quite fancy. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> you look very smart, I have to say, and you've got an amazing <laughs> smile. Right. What are we going to have the first course here? Uh, soup or entree? Correct. Mm -hmm. Soup. So, soup held like that. Mm -hmm. Do we go this way or do we go away from us? Away. Correct. Where do we rest our spoon in between mouthfuls? Oh, I don't know. Three o'clock. Why three? That is the resting tidy. position. Okay. It looks tidy and also it lets the waitering team know that you're still busy. Okay. So mm -hmm. it's, it's non-verbal communication. Mm -hmm. You would maybe have a piece of bread. We break bread. We do not cut bread. Mm -hmm. Never. You might have a little bit of bread. We don't obviously dunk bread in our soup. No. And you wouldn't butter it in the air, would We're you? We're not no. composing a symphony, an mm -hmm. orchestra. Definitely not. So it's all very close to the plate. When we get toward the end of our soup, mm -hmm. we tilt the bowl away from us and we move in there, just scraping in the back there, mm -hmm. and we sip from the side. Right. Finished position would be there. Now signifies Finished. to the team mm -hmm. that they can clear. Have you ever seen one of those before? Fish knife, is it? Brilliant. Not mm -hmm. a lot of people know exactly what this knife is. So that is a fish knife. Mm -hmm. The reason why it's shaped like that is because we are able to, it doesn't need to be sharp, we tear away amongst the soft, mm -hmm. beautiful flesh, and you'll see the fish fork almost complements the size of the knife. Mm -hmm. All knives get held like that. Mm -hmm. We never turn it up the other way. Yes, ever. there was some discussion about the incorrect way to hold a knife. And we're not writing a story. No. Okay, so the knife must go into the palm of your hand and you hold it like that. Mm -hmm. I want, you know, just like that, beautiful. Mm -hmm. And then the fork, mm -hmm. perfect, like that. What we would do is 
we would rest between mouthfuls. Mm -hmm. That's the resting position. Mm -hmm. So yep. imagine, imagine that was taken Turn away. Out. You rest between. You rest like that underneath that. All there. right. Why so, that? Why that? Again, it's just neater mm -hmm. and easier and straightforward. Mm -hmm. Have have a pre pre prepare the forkful again, mouthful, mm -hmm. rest. Maybe after you finish that, swallow that mouthful, engage in some conversation, mm -hmm. and then you would again prepare. The finished position would be at six o'clock, mm -hmm. and that's the only time the tines of the fork for sit that. up. Mm -hmm. That would then get taken away, obviously. I'll take that for you. And here, as you can see, we've got a, a large knife and a large fork. That is main course. Mm -hmm. And again, you would hold that correctly. Bon appetit. And then the resting position <laughs> is like that. Finished position. Finished. Correct. Voila. And final, the main pied de resistance, as they say in mm -hmm. French, you would have your pudding or dessert. Think of this as your spoon, your, your transport, your vehicle, as well as your knife. Uh, uh, your knife. So I take my fork again, holding the tines down, a piece of cheesecake, I cut through, cut through, turn, change the grip slightly mm -hmm. into there, mm -hmm. push on, mm -hmm. and then into my mouth. It's a lot of washing up here, Philip. Huge amount of washing Thank goodness <laughs> for dishwashers. Resting position. Resting position. And then finished position. Finished position. Wonderful. Napkin remains on your lap throughout the meal. Mm -hmm. The only time it dis comes off your lap is if you need to excuse yourself, and that would go top left-hand side. Mm -hmm. When you excuse yourself, not on the chair, mm -hmm. because you may soil the chair. And never a napkin on a dirty plate. Never. So let's ever. say ever. Ever, 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 <laughs> in, in, under no, no circumstances.